How's it going, everyone? Austin Honecker here. I just want to come on here for a while and give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite from last night, which was March 23rd, 2022. I gotta say, it was awesome from start to finish. For the matches, match one, it was CM Punk versus Dax Harwood. That was a great match, but the ending to it, CM Punk went over with the Anaconda Vice. Match two, it, yeah, that, that was match one, by the way. Match two, it was Sting, Darby Allen, and the Hardys, which are Matt and Jeff Hardy versus the Andrade Family Office, which are Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Butcher, and The Blade in an eight-man Texas Tornado tag team match. That was, a, that was a great match, but the ending to it, Sting, Darby Allen, and The Hardys went over because Matt Hardy pinned Mark Quinn with the twist of fate. Match three, it was Brian Danielson and John Moxley versus the Varsity Blondes, which are Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. That was a great match, but the ending to it, Brian Danielson and John Moxley went over because John Moxley made Griff Garrison tap out to the rear naked choke. Now, after the match, as Brian Danielson and John Moxley were still in the ring, William Regal came down to the ring and got in the ring, and John Moxley got on the microphone and cut a promo talking about how he don't listen to no man and how the only man he'll listen to is Lord William Regal and, and how it's not easy to get William Lord, Lord William Regal's respect and everything and talked about how he earned Lord William Regal's Lord William Regal's respect by blood, sweat, tears, broken bones, everything and talked about how Brian Danielson was was his friend and how Brian Danielson how Brian Danielson is the the one of the one of the best professional wrestlers in the history of professional wrestling and and talked about how Brian Danielson was dangerous just like him and talked about how talked talked about and talked about um uh, saying that they now ha have a team and uh, they they now have a team name called the Blackpool the Blackpool Combat Club and everything and John Moxley was talking about how uh that that if was and John and John Moxley was saying and if you want to join the Blackpool Combat Club then you're going to have to do it the hard way and everything Which that was cool that was after the match by the way Mat match 4 it was Adam Cole versus Jay Lethal that was a great match, but the ending to it, Adam, Adam, Adam Cole went over with the boom. Now, after the match, Red Dragon, which are Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, came into the ring, and Adam Cole got on the microphone and was saying, you know, at Revolution... Hangman Adam Page cheated against me. That's why he's still the AEW, top, the AEW champ. Because, I'll give you an example. Last week on Dynamite, Hangman Adam Page was scared of me. Because I could tell by looking into his eyes when I was pinning Jungle Boy that he's afraid. And there ain't nobody going to take the AEW champ away from Hangman Adam Page. The only one that will is me. 
And I know damn well Hangman, Hangman Adam Page don't have the guts to come out here and, and fight the three of us. Well, Hangman Page came out and got in the ring, came out to the ring and got in the ring and, and Hangman Page took his belt off and started beating the shit out of Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish with his belt. And then uh, as Hangman Page was getting the best of Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, Adam Cole snuck behind Hangman Page and executed a low blow, and then Adam Cole and Red Dragon, which are Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, were beat, all three ganged up on Hangman Page and was beating the shit out of him. Then, then, well, the Jurassic Express, which are Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, came out along with Christian Cage, and as Christian Cage... And the Jurassic Express came out to the ring to, for Hangman Page's aid. Adam Cole and Red Dragon, which are Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, retreated. And uh, and uh, and the and Christian Cage and and Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express tended to Hangman Page, while Adam, Co Adam Cole and Red Dragon, while Adam Cole and Red Dragon were outside, were outside the ring looking on and everything. That was cool. And that was after the match, by the way. And that was match four, by the way. Match five, it was Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. That was a great match, but the ending to it Layla Hirsch went over d with a shot in the head with a turnbuckle. Well, after the match, Layla Hirsch started, got on top of... Well, 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 after the match, Layla Hirsch got on top of Red Velvet and started beating the shit out of her. And then Layla Hirsch executed the cross arm breaker to Red Velvet. And as that was going on... Chris Statlander came out to the ring and started beating the shit out of Layla Hirsch. And then Layla Hirsch ended up retreating out of the ring. Uh, and Chris Statlander ended up uh, staring down. Well, Chris, Chris Statlander and Layla Hirsch were staring each other down. And Chris Statlander tended to let. And Chris Statlander ended up tending to Red Velvet and everything. That was cool. That was after the match, by the way. And match six, which was the main event, it was the Jericho Appreciation Society, which are Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia versus the Dark Order, which are John Silver and Alex Reynolds. That was a great match, but the ending to it, the Jer the, the Jericho Appreciation Society went over because Daniel Garcia made Alex Reynolds tap out to the sharpshooter. Now, before the match, the, as the Dark Order, which are John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Allen Five Angels, and Ten were out in the ring, the Jericho Appreciation Society, which are Chris Jericho... Jake Hager, Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker came out as well. And then, well, as they were all in the ring, as the Jericho Appreciation Society were still in the ring, Matt Menard got on the microphone and was saying, you know, you people want to sit there and sing Chris Jericho's theme song, Judas, but... Little do you all realize that Chris Jericho is allowing it to happen and giving you people the privilege to do so and everything. Which that was cool. And that was before the match started and everything. Okay. Now, besides the matches, 
the Jericho Appreciation Society, which are Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker cut a promo. And Chris Jericho was talking about uh, talking about how John Silver, uh, how that picture of John Silver meeting him when he was 13 years old and everything. And Chris Jericho talked about how that was a cute picture and everything and talked about how John, how John Silver's dream to face Chris Jericho himself is going to come true and everything. And then, uh, Chris Jericho was talking about how, how him and Daniel Garcia were going to kick John Silver and Alex Reynolds ass and everything. And then, uh, Daniel Garcia was say was talk was saying, you know, la also last week, we we simply stated that we are sports entertainers that beat up professional wrestlers and everything. And then uh, Chris Jer and then Chris Jer well, Cr Chris Jericho was saying, that's right, Daniel, because for example. We kicked the we kicked the shit out of that traitor Santana. We kicked the shit out of that traitor Ortiz, and we also kicked the shit out of that piece of crap Eddie Kingston. Where are the where, so where are the, where are they now? Matt Menard looked for Santana, Ortiz. Uh, Matt Menard said no sign of Ortiz. Angelo Parker looked for Santana. Angelo Parker said no sign of Santana. Then Jake Hager, then then Jake Hager was saying, "That's because we beat them up, and they're never coming back, and everything." That was cool. Tony Schiavone interviewed FTR, which are Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. Well, Tony, well Tony, well Tony Schiavone brought up to FTR that about Dax Harwood having a rare singles match and and talked about uh, and brought up the gun club and everything and uh, as that went on Cash Wheeler was saying tonight even though my best friend my best friend more like my brother Dax Harwood lost his match against CM Punk, he still fought from the heart. And speaking of the ass boys, or the gun club, whatever you want to call them, they, they think that just because their father, Billy Gunn, is in the business mean, means they can grandfather their way in. Well, newsflash, that's not going to happen. And... Um, that's because that, because that's not how it works. Then Dax Harwood was saying, and you know I'm not gonna sit here and call Billy, but call Colton and Austin Gunn the ass, the ass boys, because that is that 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 that's that's like the ultimate disrespect to the business of professional wrestling. But I will say this: the Gun Club. Are nothing but a bunch of spoiled brats, and I, for one, hate a spoiled brat. So next week, Cash and I, we want we want the Gun Club next week, and everything. That was cool. MJF and Sean Spears came out to the ring, and M MJ MJF got on the microphone and was cutting a promo and. MJ and, and MJF brought up that uh, brought was was talking about how Wardlow failed to win the AEW TNT title from Scorpio Sky and everything and MJF was also talking about how Wardlow screwed him out of his match against CM Punk at Revolution and and talked about how CM Punk cheated to win and how how uh, this was it was far from over between him and CM Punk and talked about how they were going to meet 
again sometime down the road and and um and it wasn't going to be over until he literally destroys CM Punk and puts him in the grave and pisses in his grave and everything and then and then M MJ then M MJ then then MJ then MJF also brought up about Wardlow saying how Wardlow wants him to release him, but MJF was saying, talking about how War, how he promised Ward, how he told Wardlow that if he won the AEW TNT title, he could keep the title, and he meant it. But as far as releasing him from his contract goes, he wasn't going to do it. And MJF was also talking about how Wardlow, if it wasn't for him, Wardlow would be a nobody. W w would still be a nobody, and if it wasn't for him, him and Wardlow, him and Wardlow's mother, wouldn't have a roof over, wouldn't have a roof over their heads, and, um, uh, and M MJF brought up to Wardlow that he don't work for AEW, he works for him, and M MJF was talking about how he was going to pay Wardlow. But instead of work, to stay home so the people would forget that Wardlow even existed. And then M MJF was talking shit about Wardlow's ma Wardlow's mother. And then Wardlow came out and M MJF signaled for security to get Wardlow. And Wardlow, Wardlow, as he come out and the security was trying to restrain Wardlow, Wardlow beat the shit out of the security guards and then more security guards came along so about 10 security guards held Wardlow back and MJF was sitting there talking shit to Wardlow and everything and then uh and then M MJ then, then MJF had security get Wardlow out of the ring uh, get Ward escort Wardlow escort Wardlow out of the arena. So so the security guards escorted Wardlow out of the building and then MJ then MJF was also saying and you know I've been hearing rumors that the pinnacle was going to break up but I'm here to clarify those rumors that the pinnacle are not splitting up. Because since since now we have that oaf Wardlow, since we have that oaf Wardlow out of the way, Dax, Cash, Spears, and myself, we're gonna become bigger than ever. And because and tell them why Spears, and Sean Spears said, because if you're in the pinnacle, no one can stop us. And everything. Well, M and then MJF and Sean Spears stood tall in the ring and everything. Chuck was cool. Tony Schiavone interviewed the best friends, which are Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, and Wheeler Yuta. And Tony Tony Sh Tony Schiavone brought up to the best friends that last week they had an impressive showing against John Moxley and William Re against Brian Danielson and John Moxley, but also brought up that Wheeler Yuta went into came into the ring to shake William Regal William Regal's hand but got slapped in return. Well Wheeler Yuta was getting ready to say something but Trent but Trent Beretta stepped in and said, Wheeler, what was that last week? You, you, you just went in the ring and shook, shook and, and wanted to, and ended, and ended up wanting to join William Regal's combat club? Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's bullshit. Because... Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy, they took you under their wing. 
and they let you sleep on their couch. So, and I'm going to tell you right now, I never liked you. And then Wheeler Yuta was saying, you're right, Trent. Chuck and OC, they did train me. And, I, and also, I, I never liked you either. But I'm not here to be a best friend. I'm here to be a professional wrestler and everything. And then Wheeler Yuta walked off and Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor, and Orange Cassidy were looking on and everything. Excuse me. Which up was cool. Yeah, which up was cool. Excuse me, by the way. Um, uh, AEW aired a video package of the buildup of the match between Dustin Rhodes versus Lance Archer on AEW Rampage this Friday night. Chep's cool. Tony Schiavone interviewed Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti, and Tony Schiavone brought up to Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti saying to Ty Conti, the last time we saw you, you were having a contract signed over your ass by Paige Van Zant, and then said to Sammy, then said to Sammy Guevara, saying, "And last time we seen you, you, you put on a hell of a match against Scorpio Sky, but Scorpio Sky ended up walking out the a, the AWTNT champ and uh, everything, and then." Sammy Guevara, then Sammy Guevara was saying, that's right, Tony, I ended up losing the AEW TNT title, but just because I lost the AEW TNT title doesn't mean it's the end of my career, because I still have this to look forward to. Yes, I do take a lot of bumps, and later on I'm going to end up regretting it, but right now, I don't give a shit. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and every and uh, and everything and then Ty and then Ty Conti the, then Ty Conti was saying was translating something in Brazilian and Sammy Guevara was going to translate it for her, but but Ty Conti said I can translate this babe and then Ty, Ty Conti was saying Bitch, you're going to get your ass kicked like your whole fighting career and, and everything. And then Dan Lambert and Men of the Year, which are Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, came out. And Dan Lambert was talking about how Paige Van Zant, since she signed with AEW... She cannot make exclusive appearances in this shit stain of Austin, Texas and everything. And then brought up about and then said, Ethan Page is the best Canadian professional wrestler uh, that Canada has to offer. And then and and then talked about how Scorpio, how Scorpio Sky has been undefeated for over 400 plus days and everything and then um and then Dan Lambert was also uh insulting Sammy insulting Sammy Guevara calling it calling him uh ca calling him uh calling him Tweedledee and Tweedledum something like that and then um then called Ty Conti Lucha Horace and everything and then um and then uh but you know before the before Dan La before Dan Lambert and Men of the Year came out um Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti issued a challenge to anybody on the American top team. But you know going back to what with Dan Lambert and then Dan Lambert was saying You two wanna fight the American top team? Well Scorpio, Ethan, you want to fight them too? And Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page 
started laughing and walked off. And then Dan Lambert, Dan, Dan Lambert said, you now have the answer. And then Dan Lambert continued to talk more shit. And Sammy Guevara was saying, Dan, because you know where Dan Lambert called himself the one half of the, the other half of the AEW TNT champ and everything. Well, Sammy Guevara was saying, Dan, since you want to sit there and claim yourself as the second half of the AEW TNT champ, well, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You may want to reconsider it knowing what Ty Conti and I done, what Ty and I done while I was, while I was the AEW TNT champ and everything. And then Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti celebrated with a kiss and everything. And then Dan Lambert dropped the AEW TNT title and got all pissed off and everything. And then Dan Lambert took, Dan Lambert took the AEW TNT title, picked it up and, and took it with him and everything while Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti continued to stand tall and everything. Which was cool. AEW aired a video package of the buildup of the match between Ricky Starks versus Swerve Strickland for the FTW title on Ram AEW Rampage and everything. Which was cool. Um, Tony Schiavone interviewed Jade Cargill and Mark Sterling. And Tony Schiavone brought up to Jade Cargill and Mark Sterling saying, Jade, you're getting ready to come up on your 30th match in AEW. What are, what's your immediate plans for your 30th, for after, for your 30th victory? And J Jade Cargill was saying, Mark, take notes. And then Mark Sterling got a notepad and was taking notes and Jade Cargill was saying I want a green Lamborghini green money coming through the air exotic dancers and everything and then uh, Mark Sterling and then uh, Jade Cargill was saying um, uh, then Jade Cargill was uh and then Jade Cargill, as soon as she got done talking, she told Tony T Tony Schiavone, Tony cut the shit. And then Mark Sterling continued to talk and everything. And then and Mark Sterling ended up leaving with uh, Jade Cargill not far behind her and everything, which that was cool. Um, Tony Schiavone attempted to interview Thunder Rosa, but as Thunder Rosa came out and Tony and Tony Schiavone was getting ready to ask Thunder Rosa a question, Vicky Guerrero came out with a microphone and cut a promo saying, excuse me, and then Vicky Guerrero was saying, Thunder Rosa, you want to come out here and insult my state? of Texas when you're not really a Texan yourself I am a real Texan so get your green card and get out of here and Thunder Rosa was getting ready to talk and then but Vicky Guerrero cut her off with her signature line of saying excuse me but um um and Vicky Guerrero and Vicky Guerrero continued to talk shit, but um, and as Vicky as Vic, Vicky as Vicky Guerrero was talking shit and had Thunder Rosa distracted, Nyla Rose came out from behind and beat the shit and attacked Thunder Rosa from behind and then started beating the shit out of her and then Vicky Guerrero was saying. You see, pe you see, people, Nyla Rose is going to be your next AEW Women's Champ. And Nyla Rose is going to get back 
the AEW Women's Champ with the AEW Women's Title. And Vicky Guerrero continued to, well then Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero, well then Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero stood tall and everything, while Thunder Rosa while Thunder Rosa was laying out and everything. Chip was cool. Now, besides all that, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and ex well, now besides all that, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Excalibur done commentary throughout the whole show. They done awesome as usual. And William Regal done guest commentary along with Jim Ross. Tony Schiavone and Excalibur during the match between Brian Danielson and John Moxley versus the Varsity Blondes, which are Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. William Regal done great on guest commentary. The referees for the event were Rick Knox, Paul Turner, Bryce Rimsburg, and Aubrey Edwards. Okay. Okay. Bryce Rimsburg refereed the match between CM Punk versus Dax Harwood. Paul Turner refereed the match between Sting and Darby Allen and the Hardys, which are Matt and Jeff Hardy versus the Andrade Family Office, which are Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Butcher and the Blade, and an eight-man Tornado Texas Tornado tag team match. Rick Knox refereed the match between the Blackpool Combat Club, which are Brian Danielson and John Moxley versus the Varsity Blondes, which are Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. That was Rick Knox, by the way. Paul Turner refereed the match between Adam Cole versus Jay Lethal. Bryce Rimsburg refereed the match between Layla Hirsch versus... Red Velvet, and that, that, was, that, that was that was Bryce Rimsburg, by the way, and Aubrey Edwards refereed the match between the Jericho Appreciation Society, which are Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia, versus the Dark Order, which are John Silver and Alex Reynolds. All the referees done awesome as usual. Now, now, the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite that's been announced so far next week, it's going to be FTR, which are Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler versus The Gun Club, which are Colton and Austin Gunn and Darby Allen versus Andrade El Idolo. Those are the matches that have been announced so far. So the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite next week so far it's been announced. Looks like it's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see it. I'm looking forward to it. And the, and the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage tomorrow night, it's going to be Ricky Starks versus Swerve Strickland for the FTW title. Dustin Rhodes versus Lance Archer. Red Dragon, which are Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish versus The Dark Order, which are Allen Five Angels and Ten. And... And Nyla Rose versus a local competitor. Those are the matches that have been announced. Now, besides the matches that have been announced, 
QT Marshall will be having a confrontation with Hook. So the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage tomorrow night looks like it's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see it. I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here for a while and give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite from last night, which was March 23rd, 2022. Like I said, it was awesome from start to finish. And with that being said, my name is Austin Honaker, and I will catch your ass down the road. Peace. Out.